Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. Today, we are not a Predatory Fins. We're a, one of the craziest fish tanks I've ever seen in my life. We're here with our boy, Fei Jai from Center of Stingray. Bro, when are you gonna start posting more videos? I don't know. We're always out doing videos that we need to find time for my channel too, right? Guys, if this video gets a lot of likes, I'll make sure I'll force Fei Jai to put down the chicken nuggets and start getting the camera back up. We're at, um, I almost said Adam Sandler. We're <laughs> at uh, Andrew. We're at Andrew. It's just Ed. I, I love the guy, yes. you know, Adam Sandler. So it's, his name is in my head. We're going to go in right now. He's going to give us a tour of his tank. This is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, most expensive home Private, aquarium. Yeah, aquarium. And the amount of research and lab work and all the stuff that they're doing here is amazing because they can put the fish back if we need it in the wild, which is not recommended, right? We're talking about that earlier. Yeah. But, but still, he can save you know a lot of species right here from his house which is insane he's investing a lot of time and money into figuring how to breed all these animals so that way you don't have to go to the wild to try to get them you can now man make it and source yeah. it. all right so let's go inside take a look at this amazing tank but i can tell you're a little nervous no no no, i'm not nervous what are we trying to do here do we want to get him into fresh water oh can you imagine if we can get him to fresh water? Man, the monsters that he would buy, the, the, the collection the, the that he but would have. But then he wanted our fish. Well, we can figure out, but we got it. <laughs> Try to convince him. All right, so All let's right. make sure that we're gonna keep poking his button until we can get, like, no, not that button. We're gonna keep poking his buttons, trying to get him to fresh water. Because it seems like he's all into that scenic reef, ocean beauty, but yeah. we wanna see if he can, we can sell him on the appeal of monsters, Dude. whether it's salt water no or fresh water. No other YouTuber came here and tried to tell him, hey, you should get a fresh water tank. Let's do it. All right. If we ever have power, we could do it today. All right, and you guys in the comments below, you gotta encourage him, say, yeah, you gotta do it, do it. And maybe with the help of you guys, it can actually be reality. I'm also trying, I'm gonna try to get him to get into predators, whether salt water or fresh water. Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's see how that goes. All right. All right, let's go in. Oh, he's gonna be here already. Hello. Andrew. How are you? Nice, nice to meet finally, you. Right? Pleasure. Pleasure is all ours. Thank you for letting. Nice to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet you. It's my buddy, Fei Jai. I've seen a lot of videos on your place. This is amazing. John actually took me here at one time and showed me the best. Showed you around. Oh yeah. my God. Just looking at it, it's like, this is insane. How many gallons is it? Uh, 17,000 for the system. And there's probably another 15-ish in the house too. So you know how like a lot of wives ask us like, is my husband as crazy as you? Well, he just found a crazier one here because this is, <laughs> This is pretty insane. Let's take a look at it. My wife must really be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife or you? For allowing it. For allowing it, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you can literally, you just sit there and enjoy the view. That's why you don't even have a TV out, it's over there. But right, we, never have, is, we don't have it on much. No, nah, this, this is, is definitely uh, pride and joy. All Indo-Pacific fish and coral. All Indo-Pacific fish yeah, and coral. From basically from Hawaii to Australia and everywhere in between. Imagine what we can do with this tank. Now, I see something up here, yeah, but I don't I mean, see it in the tank. Uh, how do you feel about getting into the monster predator scenario? There's some people that have suggested trying a black tip or a, or a couple of those uh, leopard sharks in the sand. The black tips, I'm a little, I think they're gonna be too quick for me. Right, they they're might. They're like, they might knock coral down and whatever. The ones in the sand, Maybe. Maybe. All right. Maybe. All right. That's Maybe. part of the appeal, that aggression. That's what makes them I know. predatory. I know. You know but, what I mean? That's the but, fun. but I got I got Nemo and Dory in here. Yeah, and, yeah. And we got to this is a, lose them. This is a real uh, friendly house. Well, maybe a different tank. Oh, we can. How about maybe a big freshwater monster tank? Oh, let's go look around the house. Let's, 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 All right, let's, take a look around the house. So this is the main tank. What other tanks do you have? Uh, several uh, in the back. Grow out tanks and specialty tanks. Okay. One that's just clams, a uh, whole quarantine system. One that's got s more soft coral and LPS as opposed to SPS. A couple of coral grow out systems and a, uh, a big spot right here where we uh, will build any day now a 900 gallon drop down. But it will try to do more motion LP, you know, because the girls like, you know, they like, they like flowy you gotta, stuff. You got to make the girls happy. Got to make the girls to, happy. So it, it will be more Ganapora and torches, I guess. And, and so this will be like a small display. And then it's like, oh, check what I have here, which is like, wow. And then you have the back, but where's the freshwater fish? 
you ever give that any thought? I mean, like have both worlds, salt and fresh in one house? See the spot right here, this corner? Uh -huh. We were thinking about doing one of those like uh, half planted up top, half Amazon below, okay. you know, with with uh, some nice Amazon, you know, wood and, and, and something like that. So like discus, discus like colorful fish. Col yeah, maybe some neon tetras, or what, but I, I'll take you upstairs. There's a tank that actually has RO water in it right now. So you still debating or? or? No, I, no, I don't think so, but, but but it's the closest thing that, that you guys might might try to convince me. Okay, <laughs> right. let's see. Come on up. We'll right. start him off with mini monsters and let them grow. As he gets attached to these animals, he's gonna go bigger. <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. Are you hiding here? Hi, Joe. How you doing? Guys, come on in. You're looking at uh, a 2,500 gallon tank that uh, has been aquascaped two thirds at least and uh, has no power really to it and it's full of RO water. Fresh water, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's potential. This tank's got the length, got some depth to it. That's yeah, 12 feet by six feet. We can put some uh, nice stingrays on the bottom here. Maybe some crazy arowanas on top. Dude, this is insane. 2,500 gallons on the second floor. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. You want, you want to see how we do it? Yeah, let's take a look. One, one <laughs> thing, when you have a six foot deep tank and you don't want to break your back, aquascaping and placing corals, you need to both ways access you know i think this comes down on a on a oh okay nice on a uh, uh rope strap system almost a garage door a garage door now you can do stuff from the front correct so this looks like a fiberglass tank with a front viewing window fiberglass tank with a star fired glass. front glass window okay. yes okay where's the stand for the all oh, here and this these stands okay. take you right down to the uh the left Oh, this is the top side of the tank? Yep. This is really nice. Yeah. This is, we're going to enjoy this. So maybe, uh, maybe we can convince you, huh? There's yeah. not there's not really salt water in there yet. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> you know how like drug dealers give them a little taste by giving a free nickel bag? <laughs> we're going to give them a little something to get them I'll tell you that. I'll tell you this. If you get more views with fresh water. Hey, John. You get the call You get it. Yeah, you mind. I mean, think about it. He's 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 got a lot of like uh, salt water ready, you know. He's got to scratch a different itch. Yeah, but I mean, he's talked about discus, but not 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 predatory stuff. No, I think I think we can convince him to the predatory. Maybe like why don't you sell him your zebra shark? Which ones? The one you got from me. I know you had one, but why don't you sell him the big one? No, no, I okay, no, can't. That's your that's your department. I, I want to do fresh water. Let's, let's convince him to get into some crazy freshwater fish. Yeah, like what? Stingrays on the bottom. Maybe some crazy arowanas on top. Like we can, we can still find like spotted silver arowanas yeah. that are super rare, right? Like I think, rare high-end freshwater yeah, stuff. Some of right? that, some of that gold stuff. Yeah, yeah. The they, platinum. They digs. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh. I mean, he's talking about getting views One of those too. Crazy dat noids, right? Yeah. There One you of those go. Red dat noids. So, what do you think? I mean, we can, I we can. Convince maybe you could try to sell it to him. He's got a very big saltwater tank. I mean, have you have some tank. sway over him, so you know. Yeah. Just put in a word, you know, plant the seed. You know. <laughs> plant he the talks seed. about a pl planted tank every now and then, so I mean, it's not that far off. No, it's there. It's the tank is big enough that like you can put some really cool stuff in here. Yeah, I mean, and it'll be different than the salt that he has. Yeah, a whole different aspect. Twenty yeah. years with him, and it'll be the first freshwater tank. Or, or maybe years. we take baby steps. <laughs> 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 He's been listening the whole time. Yeah, okay. You know, trigger, big triggers, and and mini added groupers. I, I happen to love tanks like that. So maybe we can uh, we can show you some stuff. I mean, John. Yeah. John can help us source some stuff out, and then I think you're you might you might be okay switching over. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's not a little nervous. Like I want to kill you. He's like, gonna he gonna about it. And then you guys can come to the shop Definitely and you can doing that. take a look. Yeah. You know, all right. Let's take a look at the behind the scenes over there with all the filtration and the quarantine tanks. I want to see the lab. I want to see the behind the scenes stuff. Let's go. Welcome to Polo Lab. So this let's have a really bad lab for you. So this is like. Basically, what like the lab where the fish comes in. I'm trying to print yeah. that. Water testing. This is what it used to look like. Oh, okay, all the time. I remember seeing that. <laughs> we made a big, a lot of improvements, a lot of strides. Yeah. Boxed out ceilings. We changed the floors twice. Because once we did the floors, we realized we wanted to make a display tank in here, mm. and then have six 
research tanks nice. for the hobby, so we can research things. People want us to test component, you know, medicines and all sorts of shit. And then we realized we needed. So this is actually hollow. It was hollow. Neat. This is hollow because the here. pipes from the tank are under here. Run under. Yeah, this is so like a five really foot far. by three foot. We had to take the floor. Tile the floor, and then we had to take it up in order rebar. to put cement and rebar in. The two by fours were still here. These four quarantine tanks in the wall. They're only two weeks old. They so, just came in. So basically, let's say you're buying a fish. Yeah. This is where the fish goes for how long? No, no, no. This, this, this is maybe this is like, this is like research. The coral will go here. The coral would go in one of these four places probably first and to hold them. And then we would make a decision whether or not they're dipped enough, they're sterile enough to either go into one of these two systems. A third system in the back or the main system. So, okay. for example, the reason why they have to do that is because if you get a coral, pest some coral, and then it, just the whole thing can just wipe out, right? Trust me, we're going through. Uh, so this is flatworms right now in in our main display, so and we go in there and blow the corals out once a week, so we get the, the adult flatworms oh. in the water column, so the the fish eat them. And we're beating them because now we don't really find them as much. We do find some eggs occasionally. We're actually thinking about dropping the temperature to 75. It takes the egg uh, hatch to 60 days from 22 and gives us a better chance to even go blow even more. So you see, even with all this care, everything, something that's why gets quarantine through. is so important. Yeah. Even doing all this, still something gets through. That's why quarantine is so important. Yeah. No matter what tank you have, whether it's fresh water, salt water, corals, it's one of them. I say quarantine is just as important as filtration. Yeah. yeah. See, this is not just one level of quarantine. This is multiple levels of quarantine multiple from levels. coming into here, Correct. then going into a mini reef system, right. and then if it passes all the levels of Correct. security, Correct. then it go, makes it to the main tank. Correct. This is my skimmer reactor room. Those are two big skimmers. We're actually not running one on purpose right now. You can hide a body in there. It's like a missile silo. <laughs> we were having yeah. issues with gases built up in the water. We were having uh, our TPG above the EPA limit. So we were having some fish with embolisms from the nitrogen, uh, oxygen mix. And it really was these pumps. And this fall, this thing crashes down, right? And the gas. And there wasn't enough degassing going on in that sump. Uh, we found that shutting at least one skimmer off and running one a little hot instead of two mediums, that the pressure going down, we can manage the, the, the TPG closer to the uh, 103, 104 standard. With them both on, I'm like 106. So it's basically like a lot of fine micro bubbles in it, the water. You can figure it like that. Yeah. And then and then get sucked up sucked right, right away by another pump and and never never a chance to de gas. Yep. This is how we denitri denitrify. Uh, uh, the little sulfur beads in there. Yeah, they're up to about here. And then it goes into an aragonite chamber to to uh, fluff up the pH again. And as a matter of fact, it's my calcium reactor too because it melts the aragonite. Okay. Perfect. Where's the UV lights? Here. You want to get a tan? Go lay, go lay in that pipe. You get a nice you, you tan. Get, you, get, if you want to play horse you ride? You want to get under there and ride, play horse? It's 10 bulbs, 400 watts a bulb. Can you change them once a year? More often than that. We're like on the eight, eight month program, nine month program. So this room right here is where if you find a fish that you're looking for, he goes in this room first. Yeah. And usually keep him here for how long? 30 days. 30, 30 to 40. Before, then, before he goes before in, there. Go in there. And it's just some, some of these it, right? fish are just here, like because they have no home yet because the labs are getting done. Uh -huh. Like these are the old cities, North Coast Angels. They're the only two in captivity in the world. In the world. They come from 600 feet down. No diver, one diver died to get them. And this pair, I got in 2012. They were the size of my pink of my nail. And uh, they've had a history. They've had the divorce. We had to separate them for a little bit. Um, and then we took down these cubes and now moving around these tanks. Right. So there's some fish in here that are no meds. It's like 
he has this one from the Coral Sea, $30,000 fish. I have one of six, two of six. One of, the, of six. one of the really cool things that I can see is like, let's say, if he's saying this is the only ones in captivity, he can probably end up breeding them one day. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's something so hard so to set it out. up for the breeders. Right. We're looking to do that now. So you can bring populations of fish back up right here. It's the larvae and, and like getting them through. Right. It's not saltwater fish. Like they know how to get yellow tang larvae through now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they know how to get these. Like what what the, what the success rate would be? Right. But at least you. I don't want it, it can help with yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's all in the trial and error experience yeah, and you learn from it. Yeah. John, look at this coral. That's the holy grail in the house. So when I ask people, show me the holy grail, the coral, the real answer is that's it. Well there's the answer to the question earlier. That's the one you're running out of the house with. Yes. So so for example, just so people are That's the most valuable say, coral. How much is that coral? It's twenty grand. 20 grand. And it's it looks like it's soft. It does not it's not even a hard core, it's like a soft moving core. Yeah. But look at how many colors in one. And all the rainbow. Yeah. This is insane. Look. The whole colony. Look how bright green that little thing is. Clams. Look at all the blue clams. How did he get here? How did did you jump? It was just a yellow tang in here. Patty! What's up? How did my how did this blue tang get in here? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I think, think it's jumped. Do you think so, right? Yeah. Look at that one. See how they open? And then they get their food and they close it. So that's pretty much what like their mouth? Yep. So that one right now is the mouth is fully open. It's like great giant was about to eat chicken nuggets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then we have another grow out system also attached to the main systems. The, all three of these are attached. Okay. Um, so all your corals, they'll come here in there, get quarantined for as long as it needs before going to the main. And then, like, okay. th I might like a piece of just growing it out, but I, to put it in there, it does nothing. Right. Like, the, I won't be appreciated. Right. So I, here I can control the lights, I, you know? Yeah. Do you have any big piece of coral that's like, hard to find in the wild that you can bring it back if you needed to? I'm sure we can ask Joe. So this is why this is so cool as well. Like he can help nature by yeah, except right here the, in his house. You know what the problem is? The coral reefs that die, they don't want anything that's not virgin to that territory. So Florida, we couldn't help Florida. These are Indonesian corals and snails. They, 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 they would contaminate the, the whole thing. That's the same thing when we say that you don't release your fish back in the wild. Like, right. A lot of times people are like, oh, you, you got the sharks, you know, why not put it back in the wild? Because you can't. Once you put an animal in captivity, they can bring virus and other right. problems to native fish. Same thing with corals that he's talking about right now. Yeah. So it's very important for you guys not to let your fish go. To, you know, you think you might be doing something good for it, but you might be doing something really bad for everyone else. You're not benefiting yeah. the hobby. I mean, you'll be benefiting the hobby because you are taking the the demand off the wild population out and helping the hobby grow in this respect by uh, propagating them. These are Genocanthus personatus. It's called, we call the mask angel. Um, the females stay black and white, and the males will turn orange. You start getting orange on the on the on the outside. In any event, they're a Hawaiian endemic deep water, closed off. The only way you get these is there was a breeder that had an illegal pair in Hawaii and she had offspring every once in a while. They sell for $20,000 a piece. So you can't, you wouldn't be able to find this fish anywhere. If you dove in a, in a Hawaii, you would. But it's illegal to, to take them out. Illegal. This is awesome, like, I'm happy to see this but also happy to see that you can breed them and help the population back up, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, they're gonna go upstairs in my, see the, these are actually reef safe angels. So they're gonna go upstairs, in the, up my big reef upstairs in my office. So what type of medicine do you guys use like um, a, for the quarantine process? All right, so it's uh, a series of flow charts, okay? The two killers, I mean, if you get velvet, 
in your tank, which is like odinium, it looks like ick, but you look you lose your fish like overnight. Yeah. The only thing that takes care of velvet and ick is copper. However, it doesn't work on urinemia, which is another wicked disease that can wipe out a whole bunch of fish, chromus, antheus. And the copper does not work fast enough on the velvet. There are certain fish that can't handle it, but my choice would be chloroquine phosphate. Do you ever do like freshwater dips? Yeah, but we do them, we do them uh, when I suspect maybe a fluke on the eye or something like that. But before they go in and during the treatment, they're getting a 45 minute formalin bath. Let me just cut real quick. I'm so in love with this guy. Yeah, the black tank. Look how cool that is. It's a beautiful fish. It's super black, it's like Black Panther with a tiny white spot in the tank. Now, now I gotta tell you, this tank had copper in it and all of a sudden we saw dusting on him and it should not have happened. We don't understand what happened. Certain things is hard to understand. It happens to us at the shop too. I mean, you know, it's, the, the copper level should have never allowed that. So we literally changed all the water, all of it, down to like here, and dosed it with chloroquine phosphate instead. And the dusting was gone in three days. And now we're finishing it up. We just did the last prosy, and we feed them the, the in the food uh, from Bendazole and Metro. So we use a lot of that same medicine for freshwater. Yeah. Same medicine. You have a team of people to help you remember all this because oh, it's a Yeltsin, lot. Yeltsin, yeah, I, Yeltsin's on vacation. He's there, he's my guy. These are some corals that came out of, of the system, bleached out. We, we try to patch them up, fix them up, let them rest in here. Uh, for some reason, this has been a very good rest system. We have the uh, Australian peppermint shrimp that eats the flatworm eggs, they're in here. So if, as long as we're dipping the coral, if there's any eggs in here, they get eaten and the system goes very clean from it with, aqua, with the flatworms. Yeah. Even Sometimes the equipment to run just back here, it's like less stuff they can get a lot of money. To just just, there's just all this sorts part, of, we're not even yeah. looking at everything else that way. Fresh water, salt water. Just I'm sensing a little resistance here. He's yeah. trying to pull us his way. How many elements I'm tr controlling? Every single element in seawater. Wow. And we send water to the lab and dose elements separately. I think this makes me want to stay fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to mix them up? No, they go individually. So today, a sheet. Where's that dosing schedule today? We're waiting for an ICP test back to confirm. Yeah, this is our dosing schedule. 100 mils of iron, 70 mils of magnesium, 100 mils of cobalt, 60 mils of chromium, uh, 70 zinc. Because the last time we took the ICP readings, this is what balanced out. How often do you test the water and do these labs? <coughs> uh, every two weeks. Every two weeks. And then so, you adjust it. So yeah, I, so we, well, depending on how it comes back, it comes they back. just add whatever mm -hmm. chemical. Yeah, and we sometimes will send to two different places, so I have, and I know that comes one comes back faster, so I can make a make a, a step in the in the right direction if I need it. So there's definitely a lot of redundancies, safety protocols here. Yeah, it's well well thought out. It's probably like more professional than an actual aquarium. Yeah, this oh, is yeah, way more than it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to the back of the house of some big aquariums and this is like light years ahead of yeah, what yeah, they're yeah. doing. Oh yeah. So you'll be able to see a lot of systems and about... Gone. Crazy, right? This is insane. It looks like an ocean. All right, guys, so let's go feed this tank right now. Big Jai, no food for you. You get to sit there and watch. I'm just taking the peek. What is it? Look at this. It's like a mix of krill and all different things. Yeah, seafood, I mean, definitely, and stuff. definitely have a, his, own sh his own chef for this.
you can actually hear your mouth. Yeah. yeah. The amount of food, you can definitely tell these fish are being spoiled. They're being taken care of. They all look super healthy. Can you imagine though, like being a little fish and like, oh, I got caught, you know, I'm out of the ocean. And you come here like, oh, this is actually not bad at all. It's like a luxury <laughs> suite. <laughs> so maybe I should let you do the questions. Dude. Cause you guys know each other for a long time. So you can pick his brain out. All right. Just for, so cars are actually parked above our heads right now. Yep. So this is, yeah. this is like a parking lot for us. Uh, and then this is the elevator we use to bring salt down. It's actually up right now, but I mean, just because I mean, we bring in 50, it's like 3,000 pounds every two weeks of salt. So a private elevator just for the aquarium. Just, no, just for the salt. Just, just for, for the salt. salt. That's to save his back. <laughs> yeah, imagine carrying it down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually going to be 30 feet below outside ground level. So we're going in the dungeon. These are 10 horsepower each. This is running the closed loop on the tank. It draws water directly from the tank and sends it up through the sand filter, chillers, heater, and back to the tank. We have chillers on chillers and heaters on the closed loop, so if something fails, we can run the tank standalone on that. If the closed loop fails, we have the heaters and chillers on the other system so that everything stays functional. We actually have to change this motor today. We're about to swap it out just for, for maintenance. So one's running, one's a spare as they wear, we can cycle them on and off, while the computer can decide that the flow is decreased, we have to switch to the spare. This is what, RO? That's the, it's RO right now, but it's just, it, that's the sump for the 2500. We're just using it for water storage right now. 2500 all the way upstairs. In the office, yep. So you have a pump that shoots all the way up. Yeah, so we got, well, one missing with the pump sit up there, we're gonna draw water from here and they send it up there. Wow. So you squeezed all the filtration of every single tank Yep. All in here. Yep. This is the, the trench that runs under the, the elevator, under the lab, all the way in the back of the tank. and also splits up behind the protein skimmers, which goes to the upstairs tank. So it was finding walls that we could hide stuff in. Yep. Oh, God. You know, to get, make it all the way upstairs while not taking space out of his house. Yeah, we have dehumidification just for down here, which are, are these units. And then I'll show you the sump of the big tank. This here is the sump for the 17,000. The sump is 12 feet long, four feet wide, and actually goes, it's total eight feet deep. It's actually buried in the ground. This has three 10 horsepower pumps that supply water to, water to the tank, two are running, one's a spare, and every 24 hours they cycle. One turns off and the next one turns on. But if there's an emergency, it'll pick whichever one is capable of running and ramp it up to full capacity. Yeah. And everything's pretty much made of fiberglass, so the evaporation yeah. is not Yeah, everything's destroyed. fiberglass and 316 stainless steel. This is a uh, the pool filter just with some cartridge in it for some extra mechanical filtration. We change that twice a week. And then this section here is what's going to be ripped out and become our, the new degas tower. Good. Is that where the water falls down? Yeah. So you want to go up and there? you hop up there, you can see. Yep. You can see the water coming down. That's dropping 50 to 60 feet from the tank at 500 gallons a minute. Okay, and this is the pipe coming from the protein skimmers, which is another 100 and somewhat gallons a minute. It looks different than when we came here last time. Yeah, it's always changing. Chilling's here for the tank. For Two of the chillers are here for the big tank. Each one's uh, five horsepower, so there's 10 horsepower on this part. And on the closed loop, there's two five horsepower chillers for the big tank. The, the big tank has a total of 20 horsepower worth of chiller. Okay. Now, I remember in like uh, a, another video, I saw there was like an outdoor area that yeah. had filtration, or was that an older thing that's There's that an outdoor now. area that has the generators, uh -huh. so that the house has its own electric service, and the fish tanks have their own electric service, and the house has its own generator, and the fish tanks have their own generator. Oh, so that's all generators out yeah, there? Yeah, it's all okay. generator. And then there's also in his boiler room for the house, we put boilers in to heat the water for the fish tanks and the water change water, which is uh, blue and uh, the blue and green pipes are actually the, the heating for the heating the tank from the boilers. Okay. As opposed to using copper pipe down here where we're road, this is a special specialized plastic pipe. Okay.
Oh, sorry. Right now we're gonna go see the pond. So that's your koi pond. My koi pond. And they just came from Florida and they are bumming about this cool weather right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, the truth of the matter is we're gonna heat this pond up but the heat is not here yet. So they're in like 66 now and you can tell you can tell they're not they're not feeding as normally as as aggressively. Right. Then, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna tent it. The greenhouse, the pond. Nice. So to trap the heat. And trap keep the it. heat. Yeah. yeah. There's two ponds. That upper pond we're still fixing. Come on, babies. The sun shining. It's hard for you guys to see, but these koi's are actually pretty big. Yeah. They're not little koi's. Uh, he's one of the new ones. Okay. The Concho, that one's one of the new ones. The black and white's a new one. Yeah, I think that gold one might be a new one. This is a big boy right there. Yeah, that is a big monster. That is a big boy. Big girl, big something. It's black and white, right? Oh, what yeah. of it? It's white with the silver scale. Yeah, silver scale. That copper one's pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah. Are we gonna monsterize this one too? Oof, I don't know. Like maybe throw a paddlefish in here or some diamond sturgeon. Yeah. Do they do that in pond tank? Yeah. yeah. In yeah. The you know what? Boy. He said he's gonna tent it and heat it so we can do more with this pond tank. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting in trouble now. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you get to see this video. Like I said before, follow their channel, Polar Reef, on YouTube, Instagram. You guys do Facebook as well. Yeah. Polar Reef by Andrew Sandler uh, is a public page and there's a group also. So we'll help and you know help do with their guys what these guys are doing here as well. As far as freshwater tanks, we're trying to convince him maybe they'll come to the shop one day, see what we have there, and might fall in love with the freshwater fish too, because you know, like he said before, all fish are beautiful, not only fresh or salt. Right? Thank I, you for the hospitality. I, I love planted tanks and and that that Amazon look really beautiful. So he likes the beauty. He's kind of like you. Yeah. You like the stingray, the beauties. I like the monsters. Right. Maybe we can do something combined where you have the best of both worlds. But I just want to say on camera, thank you for the hospitality. Oh, pleasure, food, pleasure having everything. you guys. You guys are amazing, and you know I'll love to Glad come back. Glad to have you. We'll have we'll we'll be at your shop soon. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll see All you right. guys next time. Take care, guys. Bye, guys.